let's go into vitamin B6. Now, vitamin B6 is super, super important. And some of the reasons why it's so important, it plays a central role in how your body breaks down protein, carbs, and fats. Now you've probably heard, you know, the old saying, people talk about B vitamins being good for energy. And where do we get energy from? Well, we get energy from our macronutrients, our proteins, our carbs, and our fats. So we eat those foods, they're broken down into our GI tract, and then we absorb them into our bloodstream. From our bloodstream, the smaller protein called amino acids, the smaller uh, carb molecules like glucose, and the fats, the different types of fats, get shuttled inside of our cells and it's inside the cell where vitamin B6 actually works to help your body break them down and convert them into energy. It also helps to convert proteins, different proteins, into uh, or amino acids into different neurotransmitters. We need vitamin B6 for serotonin as well. So folate, again, there's some overlap here. We've got B6 in this process, right, overlapping. We've got vitamin B6 is also necessary to help your liver detoxify. One of, the, one of the things B6 does is it aids that methylation process, uh, or actually it's transsulfuration, but we're not going to get technical into that type of stuff. But, so liver detox, vitamin B6, very important. And then another one, another overlap, actually this one, we'll just draw a line, is that vitamin B6 deficiency can contribute to anemia as well. Now there are different kinds of anemia. Most of you have probably heard of iron deficiency anemia. It's one of the more common types. But vitamin B6 and vitamin B12 and folate, all of these three together, there, there's actually a job. We're running out of room here. There's a job that they all have, and that job is to help the bone marrow. So your bones, this is my bone, don't make fun of my drawing, um, but you have marrow inside your long bones and inside that marrow you have stem cells and those stem cells are progenitors to producing red blood cells. So they help you make red blood cells and when red blood cells are born they're typically very large and they're nucleated meaning they have a central nucleus inside the cell but as red blood cells mature they actually get smaller and, and they get smaller and then they lose their nucleus and they take on this discoid like shape and it's here right here in this concavity, that's where we bind oxygen. And inside that red blood cell, you trade it out, the body trades out the, the nucleus for a iron containing protein called hemoglobin. And it's, it kind of looks somewhat like this. And that's what attracts the oxygen and the carbon dioxide to the red blood cell. What happens though, is for this process to occur, up here you need vitamin B12, down here you need B12 and folate. To form hemoglobin, you need vitamin B6. So you need all three of them at different components along the way toward forming red blood cells so that your body carries adequate oxygen. And that's why, again, all these B vitamins play with each other. They play together serving similar functions and similar roles. And that's why they have similar side effects when you have deficiency. So for example, vitamin B6 deficiency, just like folate and B12, can cause fatigue okay and it can cause anemia and anemia based fatigue meaning if you can't deliver that oxygen to other cells to your brain cells to your heart cells to your muscle cells you don't make energy as efficiently without oxygen it's a rate limiting step for the conversion of your nutrients into ATP which is what the body uses to produce or to generate energy then then that that leads to problems that leads to lots of fatigue so these three B vitamins Super, super critical, lots of functions. Where do we get B6? We get B6 from a lot of foods. Most foods will contain some B6, but where we tend, tend to find people deficient in vitamin B6 is when, again, this is another one just similar to B12, but not quite as bad as that. We get a lot of uh, B6 from animal-based foods, and, and we also get B6. There's, there are some vegetarian-based foods that we get B6 from as well, but B6 generally tends to be deficient in people who again have other B vitamin deficiencies. So one B vitamin plays off the other. When you become deficient in one, the other ones have to work harder to try to compensate for that deficiency. And so generally when we see B vitamin deficiencies, we see them in clusters, we see them in groups. Um, people that have a hard time or have a, a, a big detoxification 
issue as well or they're being exposed to a lot of heavy metals or being exposed to different um, environmental toxins have a greater tendency toward vitamin B6 deficiency because why? Because we said earlier that it plays a role in liver detox. So now let's talk a little bit about kind of the theme of today's show which is this homocysteine. Now again remember that homocysteine can be measured in the blood. It's a simple lab test. Um, most doctors even it, it's not one of those like in functional medicine some of the lab tests that we run are pretty advanced and a lot of doctors are like never heard of that before. Homocysteine is a pretty common test so you shouldn't get um, you shouldn't get your doctor looking at you like you're funny or like you um, are crazy when you're asking for homocysteine. It's a pretty standard lab test these days because of its independent risk factor association with all of these different conditions. But I want to I want to make a little bit of room here. I want to talk a little bit about how homocysteine is kind of a central theme that that um, that plays a lot of different roles in your body. So homocysteine has to be metabolized, and one of the ways that we get rid of homocysteine because everybody makes homocysteine, so it's not a it's not a bad chemical, it's not a bad guy. It's actually we all make it. It's like an exhaust, an exhaust product, if you will. Um, and the way we get rid of it is we have a couple different pathways. Um, where our body can basically convert homocysteine into other types of chemicals. And um, these different pathways require different B vitamins, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about here. So one of the pathways, one of the exhaust pipes, if you will, for getting rid of homocysteine is to convert it, to, to convert it into a substance or an amino acid called methionine. Now, methionine is super important in methylation. This is actually... When doctors talk about methylation, this is kind of the central theme of what methylation is all about. Methionine is what helps us to produce new RNA, new DNA, new protein, new fats, so that our body can heal, repair, maintain itself. And without this conversion, it's harder to get to this end result, which helps in your body's maintenance. So when we build up, this is one of the reasons why it's linked to so many different conditions, because we get a reduction in the capacity to get to this point and that again that leads to an inability for our body to maintain itself so when cells get old and they have to be replaced again it requires new protein new fat new DNA new RNA to make that new material and if we don't convert homocysteine properly to get to here then that can be hindered one of the other ways we get rid of homocysteine is through converting it to cysteine and then subsequently into a substance called glutathione now you've probably heard of glutathione before Glutathione is what the liver uses for detoxification. So coming back over here, this is think of glutathione as the master antioxidant for liver detoxification. So one of the important roles of homocysteine is that we convert it to cysteine, and cysteine is a precursor to helping to produce glutathione. Now this may be getting a little science-y and techy, but a lot of you have maybe heard of the supplement N-acetylcysteine, and that's what this is referring to. Doctors oftentimes will give NAC, uh, N-acetylcysteine, to help the body produce glutathione. So again, this is part of that pathway. But one of the other things that cysteine helps do is it helps form bile acids. And bile acids are super critical for several things. One, for fat absorption. We need bile acids to emulsify fat when we're eating fat in our diet so that we can absorb that fat. Otherwise, we poop it out and we have fat malabsorption. So bile acids are important for fat absorption. But bile acids are also important as binding agents in the GI tract. They actually help us to detoxify. So you need bile acids for detoxification. You need glutathione for detoxification. So you can see if we build up this homocysteine and we're not converting it north and south to methionine and cysteine and bile acids and glutathione, what ends up happening is not only does the homocysteine directly damage our tissues because that's part of that disease association is that Homocysteine is toxic to these tissues so it can directly damage them. But the other part is we become, we become less efficient at producing these other very, very important and critical metabolites that help our body heal, maintain, and repair. And that's one of the reasons why we want to know what homocysteine is. Because if you know what homocysteine is, if you measure it, if it's too high, and so those of you, when you get a homocysteine test back, you're really looking at your homocysteine levels. You, you, you know, when you get your numbers, is usually a scale, and that in most labs report that elevations in homocysteine are anything really greater than 15. 
but you really want to look at being under nine. Somewhere under nine is going to be more ideal. That's going to get you, um, again, affecting all of these pathways ideally. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.